December 20th, 2018 meeting of the Northampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'll be presiding tonight. These proceedings are being audio and video recorded. Uh, as a reminder for anyone who needs them, we do have assisted listening devices uh, available from NCTV behind uh, those doors. We begin every meeting with public comment. This is a chance for the public to speak on any issue. There's only two rules. First, please keep it to about three minutes. And secondly, this is your time to give your opinion to us. We don't have a back and forth on things, but you should feel uh, encouraged to follow up with your city councilors individually if you need to after you finish your public comment. I'll start with the list, and after I've exhausted the list, then I'll ask if anyone would like to sign up who hasn't signed up. The first person I have here is Peggy uh, McLeod. And Ms. McLeod, if you give your name and address for the record, please, after you finish <coughs> distributing those. I'm Peggy McLeod from 24 Mountain Wall Path in Florence. And um, I'm here to introduce my project, Western Mass Pollinator Networks. Um, two years ago, we formed it. And um, its purpose is to educate and inspire residents, businesses, towns, and institutions to design gardens and um, landscaping with pollinators in mind. And um, this fits very well into your climate adap adaptation and, and mitigation plan. So we're just not going to wait for that to be totally implemented. We're starting right up. Um, now, most of you have heard about the alarming decline in native pollinators and what we heard most about was, was uh, honeybees, but there's actually 4,000 native uh, bees in the, in the country and over 350 native bees in Massachusetts. Um, so <coughs> mostly they're uh, threatened <coughs> by habitat uh, uh, decline, climate change, diseases, and pesticides. So very few towns and institutions are actually taking steps to generate uh, more pollinator habitat. and so. Uh, a lot of us are very enthusiastic about having pretty gardens that serve pollinators, and we're now try trying to spread that to more families and businesses and, um, and uh, institutions and, and you know, public bodies that own lots of land. So we're working hard across Western Mass. Uh, for instance, the Franklin Region Regional Council of Governments is uh, um, <coughs> offering funds in order to do an all all county uh, pollinator pathway. And it's going to be a study first to really learn what needs to be done and then gather more funds to actually build more pollinator habitat. Um, Great Barrington is implementing their in depth 90 page pollinator action plan that was written by the Conway School of Landscape Design. And it includes a toolkit uh, that any town can use to build meadows or um, take care of riparian areas to, to enhance it for pollinators. Okay, so Northampton, uh, since I live here, um, we, we're learning that um, sometimes when you build a new park or a new facility, um, there's lots of money to design it and install it, and then the contractors maintain it for several years, but the mainta maintenance um, contract runs out. So our group started working with <coughs> Rich Parasoletti to talk about uh, Pulaski Park. And um, all summer we weeded. We started with maintenance. We weeded all summer. You might have seen us over there. Um, it needed a lot of weeding. And then we talked to him about um, enhancing it with pollinator friendly flowers. Um, some of the designed plants in the bioswale uh, hadn't survived for three years, whether it was whatever reason. Um, so we um, had a professional designer select plants and in November we planted 150 different plants there and on Crafts Avenue 450 plants uh, which is a good place to have it because it's very hard to mow on that Crafts Avenue slope. Thank you very much. Yes. So <coughs> I, I passed out, oh. I passed out um, the first handout is a, a design for our pollinator habitat pathway in Northampton and the second page is an invitation to <coughs> Um, Thank you. Our training that we're having in December. Appreciate those comments. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the next person is Dana Goldblatt. <coughs> Hi. Uh, 
Dana Goldblatt. I live at 140 William Street. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about the fact that uh, Walmart is funding our police now. So I thought that was worth a little bit of conversation and thought. Uh, I think the impulse is to rationalize it, to say like, well, we have police and we need them <coughs> and the police need guns and then the guns need ammo. And once you're having to buy guns and ammo from arms dealers, then because by definition that's who sells guns and ammo, now you, you might as well get them for free because that's more cost effective, right? And that's sort of the rationalization steps that get us to no, uh, Walmart directly funding our police department. But that I think that logic accepts as a given that, first of all, the current degree of, vi of militarization of the Northampton <coughs> police and also the number and extent of violence workers that we need in Northampton as opposed to other kinds of workers, social workers, crisis workers, that we fund violence workers and we pay for guns and ammo or we accept donations of guns and ammo uh, at a pretty high rate. My question is, because of course accepting this gift of armaments from Walmart is the natural end of the logic of having this m many violence workers, is how many do we really need in Northampton? We don't have citizen input into that question. I've never been able to provide citizen input into that question. How many violence workers, as opposed to crisis workers or social workers, do we want to fund in Northampton? And the reason I want input into that is because having violence workers who are implicated in arms deals or arms donations or whatever this is, those aren't my values. And having guns and ammunition flowing through our city at this rate, like water, those are not my values. And I don't remember ever being asked if it was okay with me to have this amount of violence in my city or to have this amount of violence being perpetrated in my name. And I can't see a way to get input into that. Uh, this is an, an area in which the mayor's office accepts comments or there's no citizen review committee of the Northampton police. There is no civ civilian input into how violence workers operate in Northampton. And this body has said repeatedly that they only control, have the power of the purse. But of course, if, if Walmart wants to supply endless guns and ammo, we don't, the power of the purse is worthless. So I wanna know whose values these are that are being served because they're not my values and I don't feel like they're any of your values. I don't feel like anyone here would say, we need more guns and ammo in Northampton. We need more violence workers. We need less teachers, less social workers. And I would say that these are Walmart's values. Walmart calls Northampton police an average of every day. 365 days a year, they call Walmart. And if Northampton Police Department belongs to us, then we should be able to call that off in some way. We should be able to stop this. We should be able to say fewer police, fewer guns, less ammo. And somehow we can't. No one seems to be able to do that. And I would say that that's because the police don't belong to us. Ms. Goldblatt? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for those comments. Um, the next person is Amy Bookbinder, please. Amy Bookbinder, Grove Avenue in Leeds. <coughs> Hello, I haven't seen some of you for a while. <coughs> I'm also here to comment on the request by the police chief to accept a donation of firearms and ammunition from our, well, not mine, local Walmart. The mayor tweeted that the city gives no tax breaks to donors to the city. Fine. But surely Walmart will get a tax break, not from Northampton, for such a donation. Walmart is not exactly a generous corporation giving gifts freely without some <coughs> I find the city even considering this as bad as, well, almost as bad as allowing the NPD to go to Arizona for training under Arpaio. Unfortunately, most of us were not aware of that until after the fact. Fortunately, though, many Jews, including myself and non-Jews, learned of the chief's plans to go to Israel for training advanced by the once righteous ADL before it happened. A group of citizens representing many throughout the city strongly opposed to the trip 
met with the mayor and police to to just wave them from engaging in such a partnership they listened and then made what i believe is the right and important decision to say no to the trip for that i applaud them and the city of northampton now it's time to say no to wal mart i believe my daughter's response to hearing about wal mart's offer sums it up as posted on her facebook page today gross the city should deny the donation how about a donation of food for the homeless shelter instead? Or pay your workers a living wage? I concur. The city should encourage Walmart to do those things. And the city should not accept firearms and ammunition, tax break or not, from a dirty corporation. Counselors, please vote against accepting a dirty offer or your vote for it will be in opposition to many across this city and leave you with dirty hands. As a city, we've said no to bad offers before. Let's do it again. Please vote no. Thank you very much. And that concludes all the people who signed up on the sheet, <coughs> but the hands are now coming up. I saw Mr. Evans' hand first, so please. Thank you. My name is Dick Evans. I'm an attorney with offices at 90 Con Street. Uh, in Northampton. On your agenda tonight is an easement in favor of uh, Professor Al Mosley, Dr. Mosley here. Uh, I just wanted to tell you what it's about. Uh, many years ago, when you were the Board of Aldermen, uh, the city took a uh, bunch of land down by Hockenham Road for the building of the dike and for flood control purposes. As it happened, that ta taking sliced off the tip of his, what's now his driveway, leaving a gap between his property and the public way. What this easement does is simply bridge that gap and removes any quest question in the future as to legal access to his property. That's all it's about. Thank you very much for considering it. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? Uh, yes, ma'am, in the back. Hi, my name's Nyla Morera. I live at 80 Woodmont Road, um, and I'm here about a easement that I just found out about or a uh, request for an easement that's on the agenda tonight for a widening of the um, intersection at Woodmont and um, Bradford. Uh, the property in question right next to that intersection, I believe, is mine, and I did not hear about this until um, Jim Nash graciously informed me that it was taking place. I'd, I'd like more information about it, and I believe that some of it may be on property that has been under dispute in my front yard as to whether or not it belongs to the city or to me. Um, so I'm a, bit, I'm a bit confused by this, uh, this coming under review. And I'm also concerned about the widening of that road because we already have a problem with uh, trucks going through that area, even though they're really not supposed to be there. They're not supposed to be on Market Street. They're not really supposed to be on Woodmont. Um, and we're concerned that if that area were to be widened, we would have a, a neighborhood problem with the industrial areas that are near there. Thank you. Thank you. And that agenda w item will be on the agenda, so the council will discuss it later in the evening. Okay. Um, good. Anyone else? Yes. Will. And then behind Will, after Will. Yes. Uh, Blair couldn't be here tonight, so I'm going to read a statement from Blair. And Will, would you please give your name and address for uh, the record? My name is Will. I live on River Drive in Hadley. I am recovering from surgery, so I cannot be here tonight. I would like to ask that the city council not accept this gift of ammunition from Walmart. I have no part. I take no part in shaming anyone who shops at Walmart. I have shopped there when I needed to. Next to stealing, they do really have the cheapest prices in town. <clears throat> what are we talking about tonight is a corporation giving bullets to a law enforcement institution. This, this gift is a transaction between two incredibly powerful institutions. This makes it more than a gift bestowed upon a gracious consumer. This makes it a transaction that helps to upkeep the oppressive and deadly labor practices of Walmart and the oppressive and deadly tactics of law enforcement. I have sat in this room many, many times and have witnessed the council pass many non-binding resolutions. They do not go unnoticed, but they are not laws and they do not distribute or reallocate money. I am more interested in the economics what you do with the town's money, and who we accept gifts from. This is a chance for all of the counselors who have voiced your concerns 
about the ammunition industry, about unfair labor practices, about people not being surveilled, to continue that conversation by not hastily accepting the gift of free bullets. These issues are related. Why advocate, why advocate for police having guns but not 10 cameras on Main Street? Why would you advocate for local workers' rights and resolutions you pass but not for Walmart workers? Please do not accept this gift of bullets from Walmart. And instead, please begin having conversations about why the NPD needs bullets in the first place. It is widely known that owning a firearm increases the chance, chances of someone getting hurt, including the person who owns it. So why are cops walking around with them? Why do you think the NPD... Why, why do you think the NPD should stop endangering their own workers' lives? Let's have these conversations. Thank you for your time, Blair. Um, I would just like to add that uh, the figure is $13,000. That is the retail price, not the price that Walmart has uh, accrued th these ammunitions from. I'd like to also add that you guys have al already approved the purchases of ammunition um, through the power of the purse this year. So I think the question needs to be raised, there needs to be a discussion about is there even a need for this type of gift? I'm gonna leave it there, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, sir, and then. So a Andrew Smith, uh, 10 Myrtle Street. Um, so when the issue came up about the, um, the body armor and the, uh, the equipment that police officers <coughs> need to be safe, I came and I spoke in favor of that because I feel like police officers deserve to have um, you know, you know, safe working conditions. Uh, however, in this instance, um, I understand that obviously when these stories run in the press, the goal is to generate lots of clicks and lots of uh, arguments and editorials. But however, being that that's the world that we live in and people do pay attention to these things. Um, uh, so I would like to add my two cents to that and please encourage you not to accept uh, uh, the gift from uh, the Walmart Corporation in the form of uh, free bullets. Um, and the reason why is uh, echoing what many people have said already, which is that when it comes to statements of values and what we actually believe in as a city, uh, frequently we have uh, passed, uh, the city council has passed resolutions advocating for stricter, stronger, and more, um, more comprehensive gun safety regulations, um, passed resolutions for uh, greater uh, protection of worker rights, um, made statements about the importance of downtown Northampton. So even though, um, so all these, all these things kind of come together, this confluence of like this one sort of reviled corporation and the fact that there's uh, free uh, instruments of harm coming from them. And um, I understand that like the emotions could go, can go pretty high around the nature of law enforcement. I just feel like when it comes to the question of where we uh, obtain uh, tools that um, uh, police officers use to operate, just the idea of um, uh, facilitating a corporate tax write-off for one of the largest, uh, most destructive corporations in our country just really doesn't seem the sort of thing that North Hampton should be doing. Um, and this is great. That's why it's so wonderful that we have a city council that can look at it and say no. And I think that would be wonderful if you guys said no. And oftentimes we have all these meetings and there's this back and forth and people come with like emotional outpourings. And it would just be great if you could just um, do us this all and just not, just not even take it. Just not even spend too much time talking about it. Just don't take it. Um, <clears throat> that's it. And having said that, I would like to follow up on the easement too over in um, – uh, the Woodmont Street area. It's, uh, please don't widen the street. And uh, it's my understanding is that the proposal is to widen the street. So please don't widen the street. Um, when it comes down to uh, carbon impacts, one of the most detrimental things you can do for um, a long-term uh, uh, sustainability of the city is to invest funds in widening streets. You get more traffic. You get cars traveling more quickly. And the long-term uh, carbon footprint results in greater carbon emissions. So as a community, statements of values are important. important so let's... Uh, commit to you know, maintaining long-term goals of reducing carbon footprint on that issue. And then please uh, please uh, stick with the values that have already been uh, articulated by the voters and the citizens of North Hampton regarding the, um, the bullet issue. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else? So Ms. Goldblatt, you have spoken for three minutes already. Yes. So everyone gets equal time. And unfortunately, people don't get more than the equal time that everyone else gets, so. It's not for me. It's. Uh, Somebody texted me a statement and asked me to read it on their behalf, but I'm a Hampton resident too. Can I read their statement? Okay. We've had a convention of allowing that, so please. Yeah. So this is a statement from Gregory Goff, full disclosure. He's my husband, and he lives at 140 William Street as well. And he said that uh, he's against taking the Walmart, uh, the Walmart funding for the police because here's his statement. The fact that we don't have a citizens-led police commission to hold our police department accountable in what trainings they are doing, 
with which weapons they're doing them and in which country those trainings are being performed and spending how much money is an unacceptable omission in a town that talks about being progressive. Our police department's activities and training ethos does not align with the majority of the citizens who live and work in Northampton and accepting a donation from Walmart would be a further departure from those values. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. Goff. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I'm Joel, Joel Kaminsky. I live on Franklin and Prospect. I just received this notice about a telephone poll. I don't think it's anything serious, but it says 705 is the discussion. If the discussion is going to be at 805 or 830, just send me the notice and tell me that. But if it's not going to start at 705, the discussion about that issue, I'd like to know that. I'm a busy guy. Thank you. Got it. Um, anyone else? Okay, uh, hearing no other public comment, we will convene, and I'll ask for a roll of the City Council. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Carney. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Mayor. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Here. We have a quorum, so we're convened. Um, Miss, uh, sir, the, the fellow who just spoke, what was the street that you were asking about? Which one are you here for? Prospect and Franklin Center. Prospect. Prospect. Is that for a future prospect? Prospect. Well, why don't we move that one up first? Um, sure. A series of public hearings, so I'd like to ask for a motion uh, to open a hearing on 18190, a national grid poll petition for Prospect Street. Second. Okay, all in favor of opening the hearing, please say aye. 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 Closing abstention. So the hearing is open. Um, I'll ask our national grid representative if uh, she would like to. There's a mini city council going on in the back. Is something being worked out that we need to wait for? Or? I just thought that I would fill them in while they were waiting. Okay. Well, I've moved you up first. Terrific. Thank you. So. Terrific. Lisa Jasinski with National Grid. Good evening. Good evening. It appears that I'm here for three poll petitions, um, one of which is uh, the one on Prospect Street that uh, the folks here are concerned about. Um, that I will address first. I don't know if, does it matter which one we have? I mean, they're all This is the one first, so we're doing them one at a time. Okay, yeah, yes. Prospect Street. Prospect Street. Prospect Street. I didn't hear the, I didn't hear the announcement. Sorry, I was speaking back. No problem at all. Thank you. Anyway, this poll is, um, it's for a poll, uh, a poll across the street, essentially from uh, where the synagogue is. It's uh, it's to be set in the public way in front of House uh, Number Two Hundred and Sixty Prospect. It's actually uh, not too far from in from their driveway, and it's to support the construction that goes into the synagogue parking lot to feed the school. I believe it is. Um, there's a tree guy that's attached to that pole right now, um, anchoring that construction. In the same way, this stub pole would anchor it, and that's what this pole is for. It's, basi it's basically just to be set okay. to brace the construction across the street. Great. Uh, and we have a map. Uh, is there anyone else, in the member of the public, who'd like to speak to this, or for or against or neutral? Anybody? It is. The McGinnis proposal. Is it just replacing it, or is it a larger pole? It, it's no. It's it's a new it's an adu new additional pole. So it's right across from the, you'll see the construction, the pole that has an overhead line that goes into the synagogue parking lot, feeds the school in the back. So we have to support that as you know, the wires pull it that way. <coughs> right now it's being supported by a tree guy. Very often, you know, this that's very old construction. We don't we don't do them anymore, but we have to support it somehow. So we set a pole on the opposite side of the street with an anchor, and that and then a, and a guy wire between it. It's mar it's staked. There's there's stakes, and it is the side that the side of that driveway where the McGinnis would live. Yeah. Okay. So you were just concerned when we got the notice that they weren't. Going yeah. To yeah. So all the butters are we're, we're going to just send it in. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. This is what they call democracy in action. You can come and talk about telephone polls uh, together with the other members of your community. But it sounds like we're okay. Any other yeah. questions? Good. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, anyone else like to speak on this, for or against? I'll note that the DPW has uh, required two conditions, um, which I think National Grid is aware of. The first is that when the new hall or the new poll location has been opened, it shall be inspected by the DPW prior to the poll being placed. And secondly, 
If the sewer lateral um, uh, is disturbed in any way, it must be repaired or relocated um, by um, the DPW asked for the developer, but the city council will ask National Grid uh, to be repa to repair or relocate the sewer lateral in that instance at the direction of the city engineer. So those are two conditions. Yeah. Great. Any other comments from the city council or members of the public? Yeah. Then do I close public hearing? Second. Uh, all those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> Great. Now we'll go up to the top, and I'll ask for a motion to open 18175. National Grid Verizon New England poll petition for Hinckley Street. Moved open. Second it. Okay, all those in favor of opening the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? So, uh, Mr. Jasinski, uh, please. I'm sorry, did you just say Hinckley? Hinckley. Hinkley. Okay, thank yes. you. Yep. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Jumping around. Okay, no, it's quite all right. Um, this is uh, to bring, um, it's been a while since I did this job. Um, this is actually, there's a, there's a pole in the driveway that's be getting pulled over and they're going to get rid of it and I think it's crossing a roof. Uh, so this is removing this pole that's in the driveway. It's going to come up to the, in the town tape and the, in the town um, curbing, just on the, on the back side of the, of the sidewalk. Um, there's a stake in the ground and they're going to, they're going to actually bring their, um, their service underground to that pole. Got it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Questions? Uh, Council Dwight. Yes. Um, so they'll be trenching to this then? The customer will be trenching eventually to this pool. Okay. So the, for the service to the house, mm -hmm. that's there'll customer be, owned? There'll be their responsibility underground. It is. And then, okay. It is. Very good. Other questions? Uh, members of the public like to speak on this? If not, do I hear a motion to Move close? To close the hearing. Okay. Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposing abstentions? So that is closed. And the final one. Um, I'll ask for a motion to open a hearing open. on yep, uh, 18191 to approve uh, National Grid Verizon Poll Petition for Vernon Street. So made by Councilor Second. Goodwell. Second. Seconded by Councilor Dwight. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? So <coughs> Ms. Jasinski on the question of Vernon Street. Yes, Vernon Street is what we call a mid-span pole, and we often um, ask permission to install them when wires or the construction is very low, and in this area the wires are pretty low in between pole 19 on Vernon Street and pole 8 on Ward Avenue. Um, so that, that setting that mid-span pole will just bring all those wires up much higher. The span is, much, is too long, and, and they come down a little bit too low. Good. Thank you. Questions from members of the public? For or against? Neutral? City Councilors? All right, do I hear a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Closed. Closed. Made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of close the hearing, please say aye. 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 Abstentions. The hearings are closed. All three of those will come up on our consent agenda <coughs> shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy New Year. Same to you. Great. Now let's see where we are here. Um, we have one more. Actually, no, you know, we have two more. Um, I'd like to ask. What's that? Let's see. Are we in updates? Okay. Um, oh, I see. I got lost. Thank you. The update um, for me is only that um, in accordance with Section 9.2 of the Code of Ordinances, I'm appointing Councilor at Large um, William H. Dwight to the special committee that will conduct a review of the city charter in 2019. Um, so it's my understanding that this does not have to be referred to the Committee on City Services uh, because it's a council appointment and the ordinance doesn't call for it. So unless we learn it differently, then we will not do that. So thankful for Councilor Dwight in undertaking that important task for us. Thank you. Um, no other updates from me. Um, anyone else? Councilor Goodwell. Um, I'm just noticing the item regarding the executive session minutes. That was put on there uh, without, we didn't need to put that on there. We, I think we made a similar announcement in October. So, but you'll see it again in January. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for calling attention to it. Anyone else? Uh, one minute announcements of anything? <coughs> okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, do you have any communications? No, I do not. No? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>
think I'm missing a page, actually. We're going to get the agenda really. Yes. Yeah, okay, you can have mine. Very good. So now we're back on track, and we're going to move to the consent agenda. I'm going to uh, read the items on the consent agenda at the request of any council. We will remove them for individual consideration. The consent agenda contains the minutes of December 6, 2018, the question of approving uh, the National Grid Verizon poll petition for Hinckley Street, the question of approving a uh, similar poll petition for Vernon Street, in order to approve a poll petition for Prospect Street with the conditions that I mentioned earlier. I will read the order if counselors want me to, but I think I explained it pretty well and the order is in the packet. Uh, next is approval of a secondhand dealer license application for Vapor City Vintage. Uh, this is a petition for an annual license for a secondhand dealer, as I said, for that business at 4 Old South Street, number 3. The applicant um, is a name has a name that I will mess up. It's Mecca A. Araj of 11 Arnold Avenue, Northampton, apartment 1B. Uh, and the next is the question of referral of various people to uh, the Charter Review Committee for appointment to that committee, uh, to the Committee on City Services. And those people would be uh, Stanley Moulton of 34 Perkins Avenue, Roberta Sullivan of 83 Maynard Road, Patricia Healy of 21 Longfellow Drive, and Molly Fox of 24 Water Street. And all of those would be, again, for the Charter Review Committee next year. Um, Move to approve the consent okay. agenda. Correct. Sorry. Great. Uh, there is no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The opposing abstention. So it is approved, and we will now move to the Committee on Finance, chaired by David Murphy. Excellent. So you call our roll, please. Here. Present. Present. Excellent. So our first order of business is to approve the minutes of December 6th. Do we have a motion on that? Second. Any alterations, corrections? Hearing none, then all in favor? Aye. You say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The next is order 18216. It's an order to grant a driveway easement to Albert Mosley. Um, this is 18216, order that whereas the city of Northampton owns a parcel of land adjacent to Hockenham Road for flood control purposes, and whereas the city owned land um, intervenes between the sideline of Hockenham Road and the land of Albert Mosley at 88 Hockenham Road, and whereas Mosley seeks an easement over city owned property in order to assure access between Hockenham Road and his property, and whereas the proposed driveway easement is shown on a plan of land entitled Existing Conditions Plan of Land in Northampton prepared for Albert Mosley, dated September 18, 2018. Now, therefore, be ordered that the City Council authorizes and the grant of an easement to Albert Mosley across and reacross and use of the parcel shown as driveway easement on the above reference plan for all purposes for which a driveway is ordinarily used, including the installation of utilities, and the mayor is hereby authorized to execute a deed of easement to carry out this order. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. And the mayor is here to explain it. Uh, Mr. Mosley, does Council uh, Attorney Evans spoke to this during the public comment? You can see that little shaded area, which is at the end of Mr. Mosley's driveway, which if, if enforced, he would not have access to his property without having to cross over the city's um, easement. So this, uh, this just gives him an easement and the right to pass um, so that it'll be recorded forever on his property. So this is just to correct um, an oversight and uh, fairly straightforward. There's no, there's no consideration involved. It's $1 consideration, so no consideration. Any questions for? It's amazing that this went that long without being noticed because mm -hmm. it was like the late 30s that exactly. this was done and nobody exactly. noticed until now. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Um, so hearing no questions, all in Oh, Councilor Labarge. Thank you. I mean, it's just common sense for him to have access to his property. Mm -hmm. uh, Council. To the extent of access, what's allowed use is uh, what's normally associated with the driveway, so I'm not sure that's not really a clear category, but, um, but I would assume it means paving 
access to utility services that would have to get to his property via that easement. Yeah. Are there circumstances where it would be questionable use of the easement? That I mean, but because this property, the reason it was taken without notice before was it was to provide um, security for the levy. That so it's an provided. easement. It's an easement. It's a right to pass. So it's, I don't, it doesn't grant him the right to build a house on it. Or right, to, but to pave his porch and, um, and to repave his driveway. <coughs> right, and, and so I mean, but we reserve the right, obviously, if we need to do something there. But with I the easement, that's what I was wondering. Exactly. Okay, so with yeah. the easement, we actually always reserve yeah. the right to uh, sign off on any project that's proposed for that, for that sliver of right. land. That well, for instance, yeah. if they were trenching, for instance, trenching, yeah. yep. uh, wanted to throw in some underground power there. Definitely. The idea is to maintain the integrity of the levees, of course. Yeah, because right. so they would technically be trenching in the right of way. Yeah. Um, okay. Because they have an easement to pass, but we so you know we might if they had to trench, we might have to grant them an easement for underground utilities. Yeah. So that would be a separate need. Okay. Yeah. Would be. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Counselor. Yeah, I just want to say <laughs> that I you know I walk the site with uh, with Mr. Mosley, and this makes perfect sense, and. As the counselor, I'm fully supportive. Thank you, counselor. And this is not particularly on top of the levy either. It, it looks like it's a good way to. It's 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 one of, you know that this is, you know, in if you go back 50 years, this was farmland over here, and tractors passed over this this spot to get to the fields back here, and before that, you know. Um, this is, you know, Hockenham Road, which used to go straight down to the, to the, the river. This was the original access to Northampton. And so um, there, you know, access along that road was quite normal. So anyway, so when this, uh, when the levee went in, it, the, um, the access continued for the farmers. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine with this. Any other questions on this one? I'm hearing none, then all in favor of the positive recommendation finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The next one is 18217. It's an order to accept a gift of ammunition from Walmart. Order that the city of Northampton accepts the donation of surplus ammunition valued at $13,000 donated to the Northampton Police Department by the Northampton Walmart store in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, uh, Section <coughs> 53A. Do we have a motion in finance? Motion. Second. Uh, Mayor will explain. Certainly. So um, the uh, local Northampton Walmart, located on North King Street, is discontinuing the sale of ammunition at its, uh, at its Northampton store. Um, and they approached the police department um, to donate these sort of remnants of their inventory um, that they will no longer be selling at, uh, in here in Northampton. Um, and so this is an order uh, it's required under Mass General Law. You've given the police department the authority to accept uh, gifts of personal property up to $5,000, but because uh, the estimated value of this is, exceeds that, uh, we need to come to council for, uh, for authorization. This is um, some of the items uh, we will just destroy, uh, give to the state police to destroy the things we that, that our police department wouldn't use. Um, but other, we will, they will be able to use it for, uh, for, for their training and practice that they have to do as part of their certification. So that's basically the background. Um, and uh, I can answer other questions you may have. So they are required to train on a regular basis with firearms. That is correct, yes. And um, so we would have to buy the ammunition for them to train with anyway. That is correct. And we, uh, you know, you may recall as part of the capital plan this year, um, there was an appropriation for uh, tactical supplies, and s that included in that is ammunition. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that's something. And you may also recall that um, over the course of fiscal year 15, 16, and 17, this council approved uh, capital 
expenditures of approximately $215,000 to build a shooting range mm -hmm. in the basement of the police station um, for firearms training, which we were having to outsource to, um, <coughs> to another vendor to do that. Um, the station had been originally designed to have a shooting range, but we weren't able to actually complete it under the cost constraints of the building. So um, we did go back, as you know, and, uh, and invested the additional funds that we needed to retrofit it. So yes, we have an active training facility and the officers are required to, obviously we, um, our officers work very hard, as you know, not to have to use their weapons, um, but we obviously want them to be trained. Um, and part of the training involves when and when not to use uh, their weapons. So. so the state requires them to firearms train, and if we don't accept the ammunition, we're going to have to buy it because the state requires them to train. We are going to buy ammunition for training. Uh, the city does, you know, has bought and will buy um, ammunition for training. So this is a gift that we can use to supplement uh, those supplies that we have to, that we purchase on a regular basis. All right, questions? Um, yeah, I have one. Councilor LaBarge. Thank you. Mayor, I was talking with um, Malchus, <coughs> a resident of mine in Ward 6, and they use the, um, the gun range on Ryan Road. And he told me that Walmart does not sell ammunition in our city Hadley does, so I'm a little confused with this because he said he has to go to Hadley. Well, as I said, the reason for this gift is that the Northampton store used to sell ammunition and they've stopped selling ammunition. When did they stop? I don't know the exact date. I can't tell you that. I just know that the general manager um, had this uh, inventory uh, of ammunition um, left over from whenever period that they were selling it. Um, and so that was the, the genesis of offering it to the police department. Now, you also <coughs> just made a statement, something to the effect that we'll take whatever they have, but if we're not going to use something, what are we going to do with it? Uh, so there are um, some, so frequently uh, uh, people who um, perhaps sometimes they may inherit a home, they may have a parent who passes away um, and they may come into possession of a firearm and they may come into possession of ammunition. Um, it's it's uh, and common that they will often bring it to the police department and we will destroy uh, them actually through the state police. Um, so there, I believe there are some uh, boxes that are not types of ammunition that we could use, uh, but they'll be uh, taken to the state police for destruction. So, um, and you know, similarly, many of my colleagues have done buyback programs where people who you know, have firearms in their home can bring them and turn <coughs> them for, again, for destruction. So, so that's, the, that's the backstory on that. Okay, so either which way, how much do they, our police department, how much money do they ask for on a yearly basis of ammunition worth? What would you say? What would be around? So, as I said, the um, you know we do this. We do. We've been the way we've been funding it is through this uh, capital appropriation every year for the taxpayer right. appropriation, um, which covers you know all kinds of equipment. It covers uh, you know the actual firearms themselves, it covers other related equipment, it covers, you know, holsters, just all the various things that we may need to outfit a police officer. Um, the actual ammunition purchases, um, I think looking back, uh, just looking quickly at last year, I think it was on the order of probably eight or nine thousand dollars was the total. Um, okay. And again, they have a supply of ammunition that they then, when they when they use it for training, then they you know they repurchase new supplies. So I think that's roughly, um, j and again that was quickly looking at um, numbers that we had available for FY18, um, something I think that was about it was about eight or nine thousand dollars. Yeah. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. other questions, Councilor Klein. 
Um, I'd like to build a little bit on the questions that Council Labarge is starting to touch on, I think. Um, and I know I'm not on the Finance Committee, so I uh, can't take action at this point in the meeting, but I would like to kind of recount some of the um, questions that I <clears throat> posed to the mayor and the chief of police and the finance director and the uh, kind of back and forth around it. My main question is, um, is this uh, donation going to offset the police department's request in the future year uh, for the budget, um, for their O&M budget, by $13,000 either next year or in subsequent years. But um, in order to kind of try to get at that question, I sent an email um, yesterday, early yesterday morning to, uh, to the police chief and to the mayor and to Susan Wright, and I asked if I could please get an accounting of the purchases of ammunition made in the last five years of the NPD, as well as an inventory of current ammunition that we have in stock in storage in the police department. Um, and I asked because I wanted to know how much money has been allocated in the budget for the purchase of ammunition over the last five years. Um, and I asked for the information for this meeting, but if not possible for the second vote on this, uh, on this particular order. And the response that I got from the mayor, I'm gonna read it verbatim because it's uh, directly connected to what I would like to propose when this comes to the full council. Um, he wrote, Dear Councilor Klein, thank you for your email requesting information about NPD ammunition purchases and its current inventory of ammunition. I must respectfully invoke Article 2, Section 2.7 of the City Charter and request <laughs> that you place this information request on a future City Council agenda for its approval. It has been the longstanding practice of my administration to respond informally to individual requests for information from City Councilors. I have only invoked Section 2.7 of the Charter once during my tenure as Mayor. I do so again in this case because I believe the scope and substance of your request and the significant time required by city staff to compile it goes beyond the <coughs> level of information required by the city council to decide whether it will pr approve a routine acceptance of a gift of tangible personal property to a city department. Um, so that's kind of the logistics uh, of the request and the response to the logistics of the request. But the mayor also went on to say, frankly, I also believe the request conveys a lack of trust in and support of our police department, feeding into a broader anti-police narrative that has seriously impacted the morale of the NPD and its ability to recruit and retain officers. For these and other reasons, I must insist that the full city council review and approve this information request before I will direct Chief Casper to carry it out. Um, and he copied the president and vice president of the council so that they were aware of the communication. Um, so first of all, I would have preferred that the mayor's response not offer kind of a value judgment about the request and my reason for the request or the implications of my request. Um, and I'm sorry that you saw the request as an expression of a lack of trust in the police department. It was not that. Um, I think it's an appropriate and necessary inquiry so that I can understand if there's a need for a corporate donation from a somewhat questionable corporation for a $13,000 gift of lethal ammunition. Um, and I also, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I wanted to understand if this donation is going to offset the police department's O&M budget next year or in subsequent years for that $13,000. Um, and then just I wanted to talk a little bit about the the content, we got a memo from uh, Chief Casper with uh, some detail about what Walmart is proposing to donate. Um, so it includes 80 cases of 12 gauge. Um, and so I did a little bit of research and also for my own personal knowledge, I think those are shotgun slugs and it's not my understanding that the NPD uses shotguns. Um, each case has 10 boxes of 25 rounds each um, 80 cases would be 20,000 rounds of shotgun slugs. Um, there's also uh, 30 
five cases of 20 gauge slugs, also shotgun slugs that are used for hunting mostly. That adds up to 8,750 rounds. One case of um, 44 magnums, depending on the size of the boxes in a case, that could be as many as one or 2,000 bullets. Seven cases of 0.410 gauge bullets, um, which adds up to about just under 2,000 rounds. One case of 38 specials, that's about 1,000 bullets. One case of 45 auto automatics, um, that's 600 bullets. Two cases of uh, 0.40 bullets, and that comes to just under 2,000 bullets. Seven cases of 22 long rifle um, comes to 35,000 um, rifle shots. And then an assortment of individual boxes of other ammunition. Um, so just to clarify for the public, the, um, the addition that I, I did some research and found out how many um, bullets or um, rounds were in uh, or slugs were in each of the amounts of cases that are being suggested as a donation. This isn't information that came to us um, as part of the memo from Chief Casper. So the total value is estimated to be around $13,000. The majority of this ammunition would be used as training rounds. That's what uh, Chief Casper is telling us. And one question I had here is why is it an estimated um, total? Because Walmart surely keeps um, records of its inventory and the costs of the products that they sell and donate. So I'd like an exact amount, not an estimated amount. Um, so not including the, assort, the assortment of individual boxes of other ammunition, we have a total of just under 70,000 bullets and slugs. And that's, you know, that's kind of an estimation on my part from reading the, um, the list of inventory that would be donated. Um, so some of these things it sounds like we won't, the NPD wouldn't be able to use. And um, Mayor, you just said that we would be giving those to the state police to do, to destroy or to do something with. That's my so understanding. My question is why, why would we be a pass through to the state police to destroy things that Walmart as a corporation should be using their own funding for to do any destruction of ammunition that they're no longer selling? I just don't understand why the NPD would be playing that role as kind of the liaison to the state police for their destruction of things that we can't use. And I'm just curious, you know, how, what will be used of these donations and why, um, and why we're receiving things like shotgun rounds when I um, highly doubt that they're used by the NPD. So those are a bunch of questions that I have that um, won't, and, and just kind of the historic expenditure and future expenditure questions that, um, we can't get an answer to before we actually have to do a first and second vote on this if in fact you know I try and rally my colleagues here on the council to um, to submit this as a formal request to the mayor's office. So um, I will address that when we bring this to the full council <coughs> but that's the background to my concerns and thoughts about this, uh, this donation. I have an opportunity to oh, please, respond. Please, yeah, I'll yeah. invite the chief directly yeah. address that to you so you can respond. Sure, yeah, well, I mean, I think in, in terms of my characterization, I, I think, you know, what I'm hearing tonight sort of affirms that because the city council, this city council, the city accepts routinely gifts all the time mm -hmm. from, from uh, corporations, from organizations, from businesses, from individuals, uh, and I, in my experience as a counselor and as mayor, I've uh, never had uh, this level of detailed request to understand. Um, so first of all, it's a gift of personal property. So we asked them for an estimate of what the retail value of it was um, to understand whether or not it fell within what this council had granted us, the authority, the police department, the authority to accept. So that's why we put a value on it. But you're not actually accepting a, a, an amount of money you're accepting a, an actual 
you know, gift of tangible personal property. In terms of this notion that when a gift is received by a department, that we then will immediately offset their, or cut their budget, or offset their department is also unprecedented, I would argue to you. Um, we receive gifts all the time. Smith College just gave a $50,000 gift to the, to the city and to the school department to purchase a van. Uh, Smith routinely gives computers to the schools. Uh, we get gifts from PTOs. PTOs donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay for things. I have never once heard someone say, okay, well now that the school got this money, we need to reduce their budget, and we need to look into the future and reduce their budget. Frankly, I think any donor who knew that you were going to give a gift to somebody and then you were immediately going to cut the budget by the amount of the gift, I don't think that would be a big inducement to donors. Um, so I do believe that this, uh, I stand by my remarks, and I do believe that this is a particular uh, focus on the police. And I don't, I, I have no issue with that. If, if you believe that the police should not have firearms and should not do training, that is a perfectly acceptable belief. I'm not going to dispute you on that. Um, but the, I guess my question is, in terms of what standard are we holding the police department to, uh, these are the other departments in the city and other gifts that we routinely accept. We accepted a, we accepted a, a military jeep and a military trailer on behalf of the veterans department. I don't remember anybody asking me for a detailed accounting of how many you know military hardware or, or ceremonial hardware the veterans have, and are we going to cut their budget by the value of that gift, uh, you know, next year? Um, so I just you know that that's why I believe. Uh, that this, you know, that's why I did not uh, entertain your information request, and I believe that this is a decision that the city council needs to make as a whole, um, because it feels less like information related to accepting a gift and more about uh, an issue about the, you know, as you go on to count bullet by bullet, how much, how many bullets the, the police department should have. So those are the reasons why. I, de I demurred on, on responding to your request, and I invoked the charter, which requires actually every information request uh, to be approved by the full body of the city council, because in fact, the city council, by the letter of the charter, individual city councilors uh, don't have the power to make such a request on their own. They technically have to have the full body vote on it. I, of course, that has not been my practice. I try to provide information when it's requested individually. Um, but I feel like in this matter, given the context, um, given, uh, and I do cite the morale of the police department, um, and it is a real thing, and we are losing police officers to other communities um, because of some of these issues. So I'm going to just call it out and, and tell you why I'm concerned about it. Um, and, you know, this, this conversation is exactly that. Can I respond? Other questions in finance from council? I'd like to respond to it. You would like to? Please do. Um, first of all, I don't think we have causality of these kinds of conversation as being a reason that we can't maybe recruit or train officers. So I think that's a, a bit of a supposition that Actually, we can't back up. Actually, we conducted exit interviews with officers. So I can let the chief talk to you about that. It would be useful to have that information. Um, but I, I think when we talk about gifts, I, I feel like we're comparing apples to oranges. You know, it's one thing to get a donation of a, a bus that transports children for educational purposes to bullets that are lethal, you know, they're used for purposes that can kill people. And the police necessarily, I think, do have to come on under a particular kind of scrutiny because of the the power that they hold um, and the responsibility that they have in our community <coughs> is a very particular kind of responsibility. So I, I, I think that it's absolutely appropriate to um, sometimes inquire <coughs> in a different way about a particular kind of gift in this case. Um, yes, it is the police department and it's because it's bullets. It's because I'm wondering why we would need an addition of 70,000 or however many it is, 100,000 bullets um, 
which are are used you know yes they're going to be used for training but is it is it really going to um, strengthen the ability of our police force to keep our community safe? And that's kind of an underlying question here that is really different than whether or not we want to transport our kids in a donated bus. Right. Any other questions from anyone with regards to this financial order? Councilor Dorr. The, um, the actually, my concern is more about Walmart's end of this, that Walmart gets a write-off on this because it is a donation, and, and Walmart's donated to other causes in the city, and I believe to the schools as well. Mm -hmm. And there's some assessed value to that. My concern is, of course, they're donating; they're making this gift. Um, there will be an assessed value based probably on their retail, their potential retail expense <coughs> of it. We are destroying a large portion of it. They get the bulk of that write off. Let's say it's thirteen thousand dollars, and we keep seven thousand dollars worth of it. Which, in fact, actually, <coughs> in the long run, in that respect, Walmart. I mean, Walmart. I think otherwise would either redistribute this to other locations, or they would also have to pay otherwise to destroy it. I mean, I'm not, I don't question the the elegant solution theory where they say, well, we've got this, we have this ammunition, here's a police department, we can donate it and they can use it. But the fact remains that <coughs> um, they, su they might be able to benefit from a pretty sweet deal of uh, tax write-off as, as a donation. So um, to that extent, their stated value concerns me relative to the value of whatever it is we would keep and retain. It doesn't, there wouldn't be a corollary in that sense. So I, can, I can certainly um, try to get better specificity on which specific uh, <coughs> parts of the donation the police department wouldn't use and would turn over to another agency. Uh, I, I don't have that exact information, but I can find that out. That would be helpful. Yeah. And, and, I, and again, I don't really know, I mean, the tax piece is something between oh yeah. them and, uh, you know, presumably everyone who makes a gift to us or to the PTO or to whoever has to put a value on it and, and figure that out. Um, right. I mean, I understand that. I, I just don't want to be the enabling agency that allows Walmart to basically pad their books mm -hmm. to be naked. So, you know, I appreciate any generous offer, although, I, you know, the altruism is somewhat dubious here. But mm -hmm. the um, – also, uh, are there – statistically – the lethal use of ammunition and weapons by the Northampton police, um, or even for discharge of weapons in any circumstance related to anything other than training. I know there are records of, and, and I know that actually, as far as I know, the last, uh, well, with the exception of dispatching a few rabid raccoons and such like, but um, there's been very, th I think the last time there was an exchange of gunfire, actually it wasn't even an exchange of gunfire, the police were on the receiving end of gunfire back in 1978 perhaps, somewhere, somewhere in the, um, up around Wood Park and then with the 22 rifles. Yes, machine. I remember. I read Dunn, as I recall. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and to my recollection, and I don't recall any other exchange of gunfire by the Northampton, this police agency, doesn't mean it, do it won't happen in the future. Doesn't mean it's something else could go on. But the fact is, given the, given the context, I, I would imagine there's some statistics available relative to that that would help inform us as we work on this. I can certainly um, provide them. I think you're correct. I'm I'm not aware of um, of any shootings, uh, any you know police having to discharge their weapons. There's certainly been many cases in the in the time that I've been mayor where we've uh, you know, actually giving commendations to officers who've had weapons pointed at them um, and have not discharged their weapon. And, you know, in some cases they've been BB guns or things like that, um, and they've been able to defuse the situation. So, um, again, our emphasis is to try not to use lethal force, but obviously, um, you know, if our police uh, are called on to do that, um, I'm not sure we would want the 
to be the first time they've fired their weapon in five years. Uh, it's, you know what I'm saying? That, that's part of the training, as well as just the, the situational training um, the, uh, that they do in a range situation. It's not just firing into a target. Um, it's also you know, scenario driven um, to ensure that they do not um, shoot someone who's a civilian, for example, or, or misjudge a situation. So there's a lot of training that goes on in that regard as well. And that's, but that's mandated by the state in order and yes. all agencies. And again, involved. we were renting a trailer that came uh, once a year <coughs> and having to schedule our um, officers to do that before we built the range. Um, so now they can do it on a rotating basis. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bidwell. Um, two, two, two points. First, um, I've, I've had an opportunity to, to tour the, the new police station <coughs> and to see the relative of the new police station and see the firing range. And I do now have a better understanding of the importance of the use of that range and how it's used. And of course, it's required for certifications of individual officers and of the department. But I do understand how that training is probably a good part of the reason why there's not been a discharged weapon outside of the firing range in all these years. And frankly, I'm comforted by the fact that such training is required and that our police department takes that training very seriously. And I would say the bottom line lesson of that training from what I've seen is to be incredibly cautious about use of your weapon and be incredibly limited in the circumstances where you would even consider firing it. That's kind of training that I would think we should, we should want for our police department. Um, secondly, I, I had in mind a, a question very much like Councillor Dwight's. Uh, which was, would it be possible to determine t with, with, with the chief how much of this ammo really could, would be used by the police department versus that which would likely be destroyed? And if that were the case, could the donation to the police department just consist of that which would actually be used and then Walmart would be on its own to dispose of the rest of it, whether they give it to the state police for destruction or whatever? And that, I, I, I agree. I don't want to see us be a, a vehicle for a $13,000 donation when we're only really going to use $6,000 of that. So I just wondered if, if it logistically could be divided up into the two pieces. I can certainly do that. I can try to do that between now and the next meeting, um, get, a, get a clearer understanding of that, um, exactly which, which, uh, which caliber rounds right. would not be used by the department but would be destroyed. And then, and maybe directly, only directly receive that which we would. That do. is correct. And, and again, um, <coughs> I, uh, we're asking for the for the authority to accept a gift of tangible property, not a dollar value. Right. So whatever we accept, and whatever they don't give us, they'll it'll be up to them to determine with between their, them and the IRS. And the IRS as yeah. to what um, what they actually gave. Yeah, Councillor Scary, you have a question. Um, <coughs> yes, I can. I can perhaps answer or point you to um, Councillor Dwight to the information that he was asking about. The open data portal on the NPD's website um, actually shares a lot of that information with the community, um, and it has officer-involved shootings from 2000 year to date on there. So, um, I think that's where you could find that information. Lots of raccoons. It doesn't talk about raccoons, I don't think, yeah. specifically. But. Uh, Councilor Nash, you have a, have a chance here. Sure. So um, you kind of shot down my idea there, which yes. was um, the, the I wasn't shooting down your idea. I was just pointing out that there's a clear, seems to be a clear bias <coughs> when we're talking about the police department. That's what yeah, I'm well, I want to be clear that's yeah. not coming from me. And that, um, that also that uh, I, you know, my approach is that, I, that uh, budgets are hydraulic. And that, you know, if we get a gift in one space, in one department, that we can actually go and move that, that energy, money around to somewhere else where we would like to have some benefit. Um, I mean. My only, qu my only thing would be is that a gift is a one-time gift. Exactly. A tangible piece of property. I it's not it. a recurring revenue. I, so I understand. So it doesn't mean that in F for the FY20 operating budget that it's going to be a change of our revenue for the police to fund the police department and other you know, programs. And again, this is not a conversation we ever have about any other gift. I'll just keep I'll just keep saying that. And I I agree, 
and the, the, the timing of this gift, were this gift, if this were to occur while we were having that discussion about what our capital needs are, we would, wow, this is pretty interesting. The, 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 we're looking at our budget right now, what we need, and here comes you know, some help from a, a corporation. It's the fact that you know, here it is, we're in, in the middle of the holidays, and we have this, this, this gift, it's, you know, of, of, of bullets, and that that's the thing that is kind of difficult, and that, um, that if there were a way through the budget to kind of just say, yeah, we, we're taking, we're, we can account for, we're not going to spend this money over here, and we can turn it into something else in the budget. And um, that would that would be helpful for me. Um, I so that's that's my thought on that, Councillor. Yes, um, I want to echo um, Councillor Bidwell. I also felt that way. If we somehow could have Chief Jody Casper look at what they actually need at the police station that we would go after that and then let Walmart do what they want to do with the rest. I, I agree with that. I also, I have to say, being a counselor and Counselor Dwight, you two with me, Counselor Carney also, we have never had this problem before. Before, with the police department or with the fire department as far as any kind of donations coming in for them. So I'm not having a problem with this. I'm having a problem of how come only the city of Northampton is having a problem with the police department? East Hampton is not. None of them are. I think that this donation at 13000 which, Mayor, you are going to go ahead and check this out of exactly is it going to stay at 13000 Are we going to do what Councillor Bidwell is suggesting? I think that's the right way to go. And... Um, Hopefully you'll have that information for us. Certainly. Again, I, I just want to, again, keep clarifying that it's, I'm trying to clarify what, what, um, uh, what I mean, the retail value is relative to whatever they're going to place on it if they're going to take some kind of a deduction. But we're going to try to figure out what, what stuff can actually be used by North Haven Police. And if there's stuff we can't use, that we'd rather just have them uh, donate that directly to the police or, or dis uh, state police or dispose of it themselves. That's what we're. They're training. I mean, is it every week that they're using the it's, range? It's, it's on kind of a rotating basis. Um, before they had to schedule people in big blocks because the trailer was only here for a couple of weeks at a time. Okay. Um, so uh, people are doing it on a on a rotating basis. Um, uh, that's and the, there's a, a training officer that oversees that and uh, keeps track of all the certifications. I can recall as an example. We had Smith College also, who donated the laser for going into buildings to search for people and so forth for the fire department. So we get these donations. We certainly do. Yeah, we certainly get lots of uh, donations, and I think particularly for public safety, uh, we often receive donations of all of all kinds. So. Thank uh, you, Council Scar. You had a follow-up. Yeah. Um, well, I, I wanted to actually, I wanted to thank Councilor Klein for sort of doing a, a cataloging, and um, I, I feel like it helps give us a scope of what we're talking about. Um, and I'd, I'd really rather save Northampton taxpayers' money and have that ammo destroyed or used in the safety of our firing range for mandated trainings than sold over the counter in our community. That's a lot of bullets to be sold over the counter in our community. Um, you know, I'd, I'd prefer that Walmart's largesse came in the form of toys or materials for the cruiser um, care pack program or, you know, car seats for people who can't afford them to be installed by our officers who are certified with in installing car seats. But, um, but this is what they're surplusing, and it's something that we would buy otherwise. Um, and I'm just... Not from Walmart, but we would... No. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that we would need to purchase or we do purchase. Um, so I'm just, I'm thankful that we're no longer, s they're no longer selling that ammunition here in our community or surplusing it to the Walmart and Hadley or somewhere mm -hmm. in, uh, in the region where it would still be out. And, and Walmart does make, does make other donations to the community and gives out grants and uh, yeah. interestingly, um, 
you know, the police chief and other officers were in the Walmart parking lot last weekend collecting, doing a food drive, um, and collected over the course of two weekends almost <coughs> a ton of food from Walmart customers, presumably, um, donating, which then all got transported to the, um, to the survival center. Um, so, you know, whatever, in terms of, again, um, this was not, here's a grant for $13,000. It was, here's surplus that we're not selling it. So that's really the, the way this came about. Any, any other questions? I mean, from the description of it, this ammunition is not anything they would carry on duty. Mm -hmm. They carry pretty special things on duty. This is practice ammunition. And what they don't use, they said they destroy. Uh, if cruisers do have, and, and we do have shotguns yeah. in our inventory. Oh, we do, yeah. Um, so they would use that. It's not, the, it's not the service revolver, but they do, we do have shotguns. And so this ammunition could be used. I mean, if we, if we turn them down, Walmart's very likely to take this $13,000 of ammunition to Hadley and sell it and say, okay, Northampton don't want it, we're gonna take it to Hadley and sell it, which is a pretty possible outcome of what happens to it if we don't want it, which means it's out there somewhere and none of it gets destroyed, so. Or know. donate it to another police. Or give it to another, give it to state police or another police department. Hadley might be very happy to have it, so it's going somewhere, it doesn't go here. Any other questions in finance? Hearing none, then we have a positive recommendation that's been made and seconded. All in favor of that recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The uh, next item in finance is 18218, an order to authorize acquisition of a storm drain easement off Marshall Street. Order that whereas the city of Northampton is in need of a permanent storm <coughs> sewer easement off Marshall Street on land owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and whereas the Commonwealth acting through the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance has a, agreed to convey the needed easement for consideration of $1,800 and whereas the proposed easement is shown on a plan entitled easement plan of land in Northampton, Massachusetts survey for the city of Northampton dated January 6, 2011 and revised in September on the 27th of 2014. Now, therefore, order it. Now, therefore, let it be ordered that the City Council authorizes the acquisition of a permanent storm sewer easement off Marshall Street on land owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as shown on the above reference plan. That the mayor is hereby authorized to execute any instrument necessary to carry out this order. No other appropriation is required for this acquisition. Funds for this acquisition have been appropriated um, to account. 62613-589022. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Second. So these, um, the two next two orders uh, related to Bradford and Marshall Street are, are somewhat related in that um, they were uh, discrepancies discovered when the city was constructing the Bradford Street pump station back in 2010, um, which was in relation to the expansion of the Coca-Cola uh, plant. Um, and it was basically discovered that we had no easement for the sewer lines and other uh, city utilities, water, sewer, um, in an existing area mm -hmm. of both Bradford Street at Woodmont um, with that crosses DCR state property, um, as well as a small section of the existing city uh, drain line that crosses the bike path near Marshall Street. Um, so basically, in doing all the, all the survey work, Related to that, it was discovered that we have we basically have built our utilities um, on DCR own property, um, but we did not actually have easements for them, uh, which would allow us to access them. Um, and so that is so we basically had to then enter the world of dealing with the Commonwealth and DCAM, uh, which can be a long process, and it required us to actually get appraisals for the value of the easements. Um, and then we had to then submit other documentation and it went through the whole process. So essentially, we are acquiring easements on state land, of state-owned land, DCR, for utilities that, that pre-exist in the <coughs> communications. And I was talking with um, an abutting, the abutting homeowner, and I think there is some confusion because it also, um, I, you know, we did some work 
when we did the bike uh, path extension in that area, and we did a lot of <coughs> Woodmont and Bradford. Um, this sort of also kind of recognizes that, that acknowledges that work as well. And so I think there's a reference to it in there. But it's not talking about new work that's going to be done or new, a new uh, sewer line or new thing that's going to be put in. It's actually um, what happened back in 2010 in that time range when we were doing this work. So, but I did, um, I did say that between now and the next reading, I'll have our city solicitor reach out and talk to them and their attorney if there's any dispute about what, who, where the easements are close to their property, um, just so we can determine that. But we're not taking an easement from, um, you know, we're not acquiring any land and or taking an easement from a private party. We're just being grant. We're actually being granted an easement and by the state, um, and we're paying these fees for the privilege. Um, so that's what's happening here. So I apologize. I know the order creates confusion, and people think we're widening Bradford Street, but it's actually trying to acknowledge work that had been done um, for the layout of the street. Um, but we'll certainly meet with the um, meet with your constituent, Councillor Nash, to make sure that we have everything clarified. Mm -hmm. So this is an easement for something that was buried long ago, and there's going to be no surface changes. Just makes it legal. Yes, and as frequently happens, you know, these things get discovered when there's a current survey done or some title examiner, like the earlier case, probably discovered, you know, Mr. Mosley's property. The driveway doesn't hit the road. The driveway <laughs> doesn't hit the <laughs> road. Um, and so that's how it was discovered, and we just want to correct it so that we have access to our mm -hmm. utilities in the future. Any questions for the mayor on this one? No, we do. I, I just want to thank the mayor for reaching out to our constituent here and your willingness to meet with them. I mean, they they found out about the the meeting, uh, this this um, uh, issue about two hours before the meeting, and um, that I I appreciate that um, they'll have some time to meet with city officials to kind of straighten this out, rather than learning about it right now in the middle of the meeting. Yeah, it is really scary when you don't know what's going on and <coughs> and changes happening. You know. Any other questions in finance on this one? <coughs> then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And uh, our last one is 18219, in order to authorize acquisition of an easement for road improvements at Bradford Street and Woodmont. Order that, whereas the city of Northampton is in need of a permanent easement for sewer utility access and maintenance purposes and easements for public roadway and right to pass and repass public utility and public safety purposes for the widening of Bradford Street at the intersection with Woodmont Road on land of the Commonwealth and whereas the Commonwealth acting through the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance has agreed to convey the needed easements and whereas the proposed easements are shown on a plan entitled Overlay Plan of Land in Northampton, Massachusetts, surveyed for the City of Northampton dated April 14, 2011, and revised in February on the 23rd of 2015. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the City Council authorizes the acquisition of a permanent easement for sewer utility access and maintenance purposes and easements for public roadway and right to pass and repass public utility and public safety purposes for the widening of Bradford at the intersection with Woodmont Road on land of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as shown on the above reference plan that the mayor is hereby authorized to execute any instruments necessary to carry out this order. We have a motion to finance. Second. Second. And I, I, we've already talked about it, but I think the, probably the best way to describe this is that to get in a time machine back to 2010, like this is the order we should have executed at the time we were doing the construction, mm -hmm. but we didn't, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it, it's proposing things that are to be done, like to, you know, for a sewer upgrades and for road changes, but it's not, none of that's being done, it's already been done. Um, and, you know, the state gave us the grant money to build the pump station, so it's not like we were sneaking onto their land and, and doing it. And they certainly funded the bike uh, trail improvements. So um, it's just this is to correct, to go back and make sure we have the easements in place. And actually, often the easements don't get secured until the construction is done, so you actually know where the where a utility is proposed versus where it actually gets buried at the, at the end of the project may not be uh, the same. So 
So this is not unusual. Okay. Councilor DeWitt. So I would assume that the reason the uh, bodgers weren't notified basically because the work had already been executed and was, uh, what triggers a notification to the bodgers? Well, there's, it, it's the state owns the land uh, and they're conveying us an easement on their land. So right, no, it, yeah, so. Generally the abutter notifications are if there's a development project right. happening or some kind of a change of use in a land and, um, and so really so was, was there a notification that was sent out at the time, in, back in 2010, when we did the modifications on the sewer? Uh, the sewer That's line. a really good question. Like, I don't even know when your house was built. Uh, it was like, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Road improvements at Bradford and Woodmont. Two, two good weeks of buying. 18218 and 20. 18219. Sure, that's a good idea. Uh, I, I, would move, I would move those two. Thank you. Second Seconded by, Seconded by, Seconded by yeah. Councilor Murphy. So, discussion on this? Are we all set for approval? Councilor Nash, Councilor from Ward 3. I, I just want to tell you that I've spoken with my constituent and that so it's clear that I'm voting yes tonight to move this forward and that I'm looking to hear what the outcome is and um, that um, my vote for second reading is not superior. Got it. Thank you. Any other, other comments from the city council? All right. So uh, let's have a roll call on this financial order. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Sharp. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. 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 Okay, the orders are both approved in the first reading. Next, uh, I'd like a motion to approve 18216 in order to grant a driveway easement to Albert Mosley. So approved. Seconded by? Second. Second. Councilor Bidwell. Any discussion on this? <coughs> Other Ward 3 easement. We had some in finance already, so it sounds like we're ready to vote on it. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Sharp. Yes. Okay, the order is approved in first reading. Next is 18217, order to accept gift of ammunition from Walmart. A motion to approve this and get it on the floor for discussion. Move approval. Second, Second. by Councilor Labarge. Uh, so this is on the floor. Um, Discussion? Councilor Klein. Um, I was uh, hoping to um, see this referred to city services that um, has incorporated public safety into its purview um, for further discussion, but also to um, have the committee consider <coughs> forwarding to the mayor the, um, the request for information so that we can uh, get more information about what the budget looks has looked like historically with regard to uh, the purchase of ammunition and moving forward how it might offset um, uh, the budget, the O&M piece of the, uh, the police budget. So I would like to make a motion that um, this be referred to city services. Okay, so I hear that motion to refer. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second the motion for the purpose of discussion. Does the chair of city services like to comment? Yeah, as chair of city services, um, <coughs> it wouldn't be as normal for us to um, to have this formal process, but as it was an interest um, matter, and I think this needs to be a closed meeting with our principals meeting in January. And um, you know, if not, since we'd already be meeting with her, it would be timely um, a way to some of those questions or maybe to have a discussion about the um, information requested so that it's safe to move on. Uh, for myself, I certainly see that as a reasonable course of action. Um, I heard a lot of questions from almost everyone in the City Council this evening. I'd be more comfortable if we could discuss it further before acting. So. Any other comments on the motion to refer to city services? Mr. Mayor, do you want to comment? Again, to comment that this is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And I'll just keep saying it again. It's not standard practice to refer gifts to uh, mm -hmm. a committee. And I'm just disappointed that we couldn't have treat this like other gifts and have a conversation about it. And so, and it's, again, I'll just stand by my, uh, my comment. That was a good one. Um, I think it's really unnecessary. I, I, I too find it um, surprising and, and disappointing that we are singling out this particular donation to this particular department for such scrutiny when it, it, nothing like that has ever been done before. Um, and I do think we need to be cognizant uh, as the legislative body uh, for the city of uh, the impact on morale in our police department. It, it is a real thing. <clears throat> you may know that 
every year on a rotating basis, one of the city councilors sits in on the committee uh, or on the uh, interview committee that the police department puts together to talk to potential new recruits, candidates to become police officers. And I was the one this year. And I can say that in interviews with eight candidates that I sat in on, the question of how the police are perceived by the community and morale issues came up in every single conversation. So not only do exit interviews show that the morale in our police department is an issue when officers choose to depart, uh, it's also an issue when we go out to recruit and we want to get the best possible candidates. So I, I, I think that um, we should be very, very careful in the in thinking about the messages that we're sending to the community, the messages that we're sending to our police officers in singling out an item like this for such unusual scrutiny when in fact it is merely uh, receiving by donation uh, ammunition that would otherwise be, be used anyway. Um, I, I think it's, I just think it's inappropriate to, to, to provide such um, such unusual scrutiny to this particular situation. Councilor Gore. Well, this is unusual, though. Um, in, in usual, unusual, in, I mean, there are clearly are, uh, the, there's a community concern. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't characterize it as it has been characterized or is that the, the community in, in the main, but the fact is, is that we're not talking about school books. We're not talking about buses. We're not talking, we're talking about uh, lethal systems that we acknowledge and recognize that uh, the police department needs to be trained on and is required. And, and as, as the circumstances are, this is how we do public safety. This is how public safety is established in the community. There are questions that are relative to this, uh, you know, as I said, there was our uh, concern relative to a large corporation making a donation and possibly benefiting from their largesse, and I do put that in quotes, uh, while we, on the other hand, probably don't get the benefits that they would actually realize uh, financially. I, I, I have a problem with that, and I think that warrants further discussion. But we're also talking about a department, fairly or not, that it's still actually charged. It, I mean, there's only one group uh, uh, that's under the employ of the city of Northampton that actually has the right to carry a gun and has the authority to shoot and kill citizens. So that actually warrants a special consideration. I do understand and appreciate the point about the impact on morale. I've also participated in those police interviews. And the fact is, is that police should understand and realize that they do come under special scrutiny for that very reason. Some people prefer not to work in this department because this community does have that level of scrutiny. Other communities which are, haven't expressed too much concern about that, they maybe would be more inclined to go to them. I think that there, you don't get a pass, I think, I think it is an enormous responsibility to become a law enforcement officer. And one of those big, enormous responsibilities is the fact that you do, you have lethal authority over people. Teachers don't have that, fire department doesn't have that, DPW doesn't have that. We, I think, in the main, as a community, require a police department to work and exist within our, our, our community to, for because of the problems that present themselves. There, are, there has been an ongoing debate. We've been triggered by any number of items that come before the council. The fact remains is that I, for one, subscribe to the notion that police department actually is valuable and our police department actually <coughs> is an excellent police department. That said, it goes with the territory, as it were. So I don't think I, this, the, we've, we sent a number of things to committee that I didn't particularly get excited about that was also unprecedented in the past, and um, we made it, we survived, uh, you know, I, I don't
don't think that uh, this is going to be any worse than any of those discussions. There will be lots of things said. There will be uh, emotional discussions relative to it. And usually, of course, it's speaking to a larger issue of focusing on a smaller item, usually a, usually a capital item, oddly enough. I mean, that is the nature, and we've said this before, that is the nature of this body, that's the nature of governance, it's the nature of democratic process, and I don't have a problem with this going on here for further further analysis. Thank you. <coughs> uh, any other? Um, Council LaBarge and then Council Klein. Why couldn't, instead of going to city services, why couldn't we have a finance committee meeting? Councillor, if you're directing that generally, you, um, you. as you know, <coughs> um, public safety, um, the jurisdiction of the old public safety committee was taken over by city services. I believe you served on public safety right. um, and think every committee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you know that well. And I think that would be the <coughs> rationale and finance has already uh, voted on it um, today. So. Do you have question further questions? Is, though, we're hearing about what she got for the amount on her research versus how much she got versus how much money is involved here with her research and then getting the exact quote from Chief Jody Casper of what she needs and what she does not need. And I think once we find that out, there will be a significant change in that amount of money. So to me, that's finance. Okay. Whatever. And, okay, no, fair enough. And um, I'll just say that, you know, we're, we're discussing referral. <clears throat> I'd like to try to put it in perspective. I mean, discussing something is not a punitive measure. Not to me. It's, it's, it's our job. And I think the concern is that by discussing it further, that sends the wrong message. Let me say that that is not the message that I send tonight. But I do think it is appropriate for the council to uh, think about the questions that almost every member of the council have posed when they are posed. And as council president, it's my hope to facilitate a discussion about those questions. I think that I feel that's my responsibility. And I think it's our responsibility as well. So. I don't see it as a punitive thing. I don't see it as decisive. Okay? So I don't think it's that big a deal, personally. Um, other discussion? Um, Councilor Nash has not spoken. Okay, Councilor Nash. Um, so, so my concern is that, you know, it, last year, we, you know, we went through several rounds of police equipment. We went through cameras. We went through <coughs> tactical gear. Uh, now we're talking about ammunition, and that, um, and that, and I think towards the end of one of those discussions I, last year, we were kind of like, you know what, um, this is not the way to do it. That when we have these discussions about one particular item, we are not inviting the better conversation, and that m my concern is that we're going to do that again, and that um, that. Um, I, I, I think we're, we're going to end up, and the bigger question for us is, for the way I see it, is how we as citizens relate to our police department. And that there is, there is a s struggle around that for some citizens in Northampton. And, um, and that there's distrust. And that we're not going to get it by talking about these bullets. Um, and, um, and I, again, think that that is the route to go at some point, and um, maybe starting tonight or in the new year. But I think if we send this to committee, we're going to end up in much the same place. And, um, and, and I, I don't think it, it, it fares well for our police department, and I don't think it fares well for us. So. Um, that's my thought on it. I, I, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's going to benefit us to, to go to committee with this. But at the same time, we've got to realize that there's a discussion we probably should have. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so Councillor Klein wanted to be recognized and also the mayor is, is waiting. So I will defer to Councillor Klein unless she wishes to. That's fine. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that, you know, I, I was not saying that sending something to the committee was unprecedented. What I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that if the council wants to have a public policy discussion about whether or not our police should be armed or shouldn't be armed, or, um, the, you know, it seems like the budget process is a process where you can decide that you don't want to mm -hmm. build a shooting range or you don't want to outfit police with equipment and, and, gu and guns and et cetera. That's certainly within your right. I guess what I'm saying is that it feels like this hearing, um, or it just feels like this gift item of a gift of something that the police already have and already purchase and already utilize um, <coughs> is being used or is going to be extrapolated into some larger policy discussion. So, and I just feel like that's the concern that I have about it. So, and actually, I'm frankly regretting that I even agreed to accept the gift and probably should just withdraw it and tell Walmart to give it to another community. Because, I, again, my concern is. I can, you know, I can write the script for the hearing already. Um, I've been there. I've been in the middle of it. I understand, and I understand what it's. I've, you know, some of the comments I heard tonight, frankly, mm -hmm. um, are outrageous. Uh, you know, the characterization of our police officers as violence workers, um, when in fact most of our police officers are, receive more training in social services and drug intervention, and um, so <coughs> it's it's. So anyway, that's my concern. So, and I'm just going to okay. express my concern. I and we hear you. Y I'm on the record. Um, look, I have to try and shape this discussion a little bit. There are nine members of the city council debating this. Members of the public who may have said whatever they're going to say speak for themselves. I don't want this to turn into a polemic for or against the police. This is about uh, a straightforward acceptance of a gift, yes or no, and in questions, I heard questions from every counselor, even though some who are in favor of the referral and some who are against it, I heard questions from both people. Um, if it's referred to committee, the goal is to discuss the gift. It is not to have a wide-ranging discussion about policing. It is not in any way about whether or not police should be deprived of their guns. That's simply, <coughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear any member of the city council say that. It's important to reassure the public if there's a concern about that. That's not what this is about. Maybe some people want that. I don't. That's not my goal. My goal is to have proper process around this issue that's come before the city council, and I'm hearing that people want to discuss it here. I want to be clear about that. That's what we're talking about. This is not a broad issue about whether police should carry guns or, or large public safety issues in America. This is a, a, about a gift order. Okay, so now I'm a little bit lost. I think Councillor Klein was next and then Councillor Dwight. Well, I just want to remind everyone that when I suggested that this be referred to city services that my goal was to um, see if we um, we don't have a mechanism by which the council today could make uh, a suggestion or take a vote on whether or not to submit um, a request for information from the mayor. Okay, we can't so know at each other. So instead of, because that's not an option and because this vote um, in its first and second vote would happen before we were actually able to consider whether or not as a council we wanted to submit a request for information to the mayor. Um, I thought that I would refer it to city services so that city services could take up because a committee can make that recommendation or make that request for information really. Um, I was hoping that city services would would grapple with that question and decide whether or not they were willing to submit some questions to the mayor for follow-up before we make a decision about the gift. Councilor? Yeah. I mean, Councilor, I just heard also the mayor say then, is it, I mean, is it uh, appropriate for a committee to um, request, make an information request? 
or just the entire council? Maybe I'll direct that to the mayor. Well, I can answer or that. I, mean, um, I think there is a little bit of gray area there, to be honest. Um, as I read the charter, it's the whole council that has to vote. Mm -hmm. However, if you look at our rules, I think there's kind of a vestige from the old rules that sort of attempts to delegate that to a committee. I don't know whether that holds or not, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think that was originally an intent that they could ask those questions. But I could see the solicitor weighing in saying, no, it has to be the full council. Well, I certainly remember that um, committees that I've been on, the Committee for Community Resources, for instance, was um, able to put in requests for information from city department heads when we were talking about downtown economy. So there's certainly precedence for that happening. Um, so, so, you know, I, I think that that was my thinking behind why if we sent it in fact to city services, city services could make that request for information. I just want to say that I, again, typically, my typical position is we, we provide information to committees, to individual counselors. Um, uh, you know, I will say uh, Article 2, Section 2-9 is, is 7 is a state law, so it's, um, I believe it would be superior to council rules. But I'm going to say that um, I'm not sure why then you couldn't continue, you know, if you put it on the agenda as an information request, why you couldn't continue the item until you receive the information, if this information is so critical to the decision. Again, I, I, um, I'm concerned about that as well, as I've said to you, um, because it, again, feels like it's more about a larger issue, which you can certainly talk with the chief about and your regular you know, meeting with her in terms of these concerns. Um, so I, that's, that's what I would uh, say in terms of that. Well, Mr. Mayor, let me ask you, are, are you suggesting that the item would be continued from today until the next council meeting, whereupon the council could consider an up or down vote on an information request? The question would be, you've got two readings between now and then. And so you could take a reading tonight, and then on second reading, you'll have the information request. And if the information request is, is adopted in some form, then you could de delay a second reading until yeah, you yeah. had the additional information. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon for the council on second reading to say we need more information and defer a second reading. So, happens all the time. That is, in fact, not, you know, common. So, the question it is, it is, is a, what I find unprecedented is, is sending a gift request. So, that's all. Uh, so, okay, did, I guess, Councillor, well, I think you relinquished the floor, so I'm going to, Councillor Bidwell, please, <coughs> and then you can go. Um, it's been uh, said that I was one of those councillors that had questions, too. I did have a very specific question, but my question was answered. My question w to the mayor was, would it be possible to have the police chief determine which of this uh, ammunition would actually be used by the police department mm -hmm. uh, in ways that they would normally be using it anyway, and which would not be used and therefore available for destruction? And the answer was yes, that, that he'd be glad to provide that information. And the second was, then could we just have the police department receive only that which would be used? Mm -hmm. Therefore, theoretically, they could take a deduction only for that, so we wouldn't be enabling them to take a, a padded deduction. And then they're on their own to dispose of, of, of the other ammo. And the, the answer that I got to that question was, was yes. So as far as I'm concerned, my questions have been asked and answered. Um, to, to, to my satisfaction, and I don't think th that this is the time or a city services committee meeting would be a time to tackle the larger question of what is this community's uh, view of the role we want for our police department to have and do we want our police department to be armed. Uh, this is not the time for that, nor would a uh, s committee conversation about a donation be the time for that. Um, <coughs> the committee would not be considering the larger question of whether the police should be armed in Northampton. Just as we're not theoretically considering that tonight, but nevertheless, we know how these conversations proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Shara had her hand raised, and then Councilor Bidwell. Just to Councilor Bidwell's point, um, the, the, the questions may have been answered, but if, if, that, if the present order was separated out into what could be destroyed and what could be donated, then that would be a different order. So. It, be, it would have to be an amended, a significantly amended order. It would have to be a different order mm -hmm. than what we have before us. Point taken, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think <coughs> I heard you on the, on, on the other side <coughs> that makes that kind of adjustment. Between now and second reading, yes. Yeah. <coughs> uh, 
Councillor Dwight. Uh, just to be clear, th as the Council President indicated, I mean, I have a feeling that people are conflating the public comment with debate on the Council floor. And the Council floor, we are basically focused on the items as they're presented in the agenda. We sometimes stray. We're straying a little bit now, I suppose. But the fact is that the debate as such is the debate on the item that's on the agenda. <coughs> and that's how we vote. Uh, what I'm hearing is not said overtly, but I'm hearing sort of tacitly implied is that the public comment is the one that makes people feel most uncomfortable. That the public, the, the emphatic public comment is the thing that gives people a certain disquietude. Um, one, I understand that. Two, we don't control that. We shouldn't control that. And the fact remains is we shouldn't predicate decisions, good, bad, or indifferent, on essentially things that are said necessarily in public comment. They inform or they, pr they provoke or whatever. But the fact is, is then we are charged as a representative body to make decisions predicated on the information we have in hand. So in that respect, I don't think, I, I mean, two points. One, I, I have absolutely no problem with going to committee to discuss some of the questions that we've discussed. I would say that, and I'm not a member of that committee, but I would say that I would not be in favor of the information request because I don't think it's a, at that point it was, uh, I have not heard anything that would actually inspire me to vote in favor of it. But that could change, which is why we have these things. So I, I the, you know, we had this discussion somewhat when back on the camera discussion when, when the things were, uh, uh, by the two objectors right now, referred, wanted to refer to committee for further discussion. And then I remember arguing the opposite side, as I recall. And uh, Councilor Nash and Councilor Bidwell are arguing in opposition to me, sending something, making the same points that I'm making now. So I appreciate the irony there. But the fact remains is that this is what this is what this is. This is what this messy little process is. And um, our responsibility is not to is to make a reasonable and sound and fair decisions. And the fact that there's a motion attached to it should not scare us from having the discussion. So Councillor Klein had been waiting to be recognized. Um, the discussion's gone in so many different directions at this point that I'm I'm kind of far away from where I wanted to make a comment before. Yeah, this is to the referral. Um, I the the kind of inventory that I did and figuring out exactly how many bullets and um, rounds we are talking about wasn't just an empty exercise. It was because. I wanted to understand what the amount of lethal munitions is that we're talking about because I think there is something significant in that. And that's also why I wanted to understand what the NPD has in stock now, how much is used, how long this would last, what, how it would affect the budget in the future. These are all questions they're not just antagonistic questions to express my um, anger at policing in the United States or in our city. It's, they're very concrete questions that I wanted answers to to make a reasoned decision on whether or not this is a gift that we need to accept. Do we need to accept 70,000 bullets um, in our community? And so I try to find an elegant way to make sure that some of those questions get answered by trying to have this referred to city services. That's what I'm hoping will happen. I think necessarily, you know, you, you end up in policy discussions and philosophical discussions and political discussions from the strangest of places sometimes. You know, it's, sometimes it, it, it so happens that a question about it, a donation triggers questions that are philosophical in nature and make us ask questions about what we want for our community and what we don't want for our community. And I think 
that's okay. Um, the, you know, being, we've been told a number of times this evening that, you know, this has never happened before with a donation or a gift, that this is just de rigueur. And, I, you know, different, at different times, different, different things come up <laughs> that trigger questions. And I think that that's appropriate. And I, I um, stand by this, this referral, um, this idea of referring to city services, and I hope people will um, see it as what it is, not a refer uh, uh, an attempt on my part to create a referendum about the Northampton Police Department. Any other discussion? To reiterate, I think some people observe politics at all levels and they think sending something to committee is sending it into the wilderness. To Councilor Dwight's point, that is not the case or the intention here. Um, there are honest questions being asked. We should have a process where we can have a real discussion about that. So I'm fine supporting a motion uh, to refer this to a city council committee. And for me, it's very simple. I have faith that the chair of city services and the members of city services will look at the question professionally and in detail. So, it would, and I don't think we're making much headway now. So I think this would be a good approach. So any other discussion? Council Murphy. Council Murphy asks we roll call. Oh, Councilor LaBarge. Just two more questions, sure. Councilor. Do we have city services is what, January 7th? Whatever the first Monday of January. Is it? So, we have city council on January 3rd. So we would not be doing that second vote on the 3rd, correct? It would be in committee. We exactly. actually wouldn't be doing either vote. We'd have referred it at this point. Correct, yes. So right now we'd have referred it. I know that. So, which means the second reading would be on January 17th. Uh, any other questions? Uh, so there's a request for a roll call, and I'll ask for roll the council. And the question of referring mm -hmm. uh, the order to for to accept a gift to the committee on city services. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. No. Councilor Knapp. No. Councilor Lozano. Yes. Yes. Councilor Diaz? No. Yes. <coughs> okay, uh, the referral passes. Um, now we have a series of financial orders on second reading, and we'll go through them fairly rapidly. Uh, first is 18207, in order to appropriate free cash to stabilization and capitalization, uh, capital stabilization. A motion to approve this on first reading. Mm -hmm. Made and seconded second. by Councillor Klein. Any discussion <coughs> on second reading? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Knapp? Yes. Councillor Lozano? Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Dizel? Yes. Councillor Klein? Absent, Absent for Absent. temporarily. Uh, yes. Okay. Approved on second reading. Next, 18208, in order to appropriate. Enterprise fund retained earnings in various capital <coughs> projects. Move to approve. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask for your roll call. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Knapp? Yes. Councillor Lozano? Yes. Councillor Shaw? Yes. Councillor Dizel? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. And Councillor Klein? Yes. Um, Next is 18209, in order to appropriate free cash to Northam Public Schools for McKinney Vento transportation reimbursement. Motion to approve. Councillor Dwight and seconded by Second. Councillor Bidwell. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, roll call. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Knapp? Yes. Councillor Lozano? Yes. Councillor Shaw? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Yes. 
proof on second reading. There are three more. Next is 18.210, in order to appropriate free cash to Northam Public Schools for circuit breaker reimbursement. Move motion approved. Second. Made and second. Any discussion? <coughs> um, roll call on this order. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Approved on second reading. Next, 18211, in order to appropriate host committee, uh, community fee to health department for emergency preparedness activities. Move second. Approved. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Yes. That passes as well. Uh, finally, 18212, in order to borrow $2.5 million for paving. Move to approve and second. Second. And second. This is a feel good measure. We all support this. Hearing no further discussion, you'll have the roll call. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Labard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Mott. Yes. Yes, and that is passed as well. Finally, um, one ordinance on second reading, 18173, an ordinance to amend chapter 312-36 of the code book, which is a proposal to increase the hourly rate in EJ Gare parking garage. Motion Second. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. any discussion on this? Now, the time has come to pass this, unlike the last council meeting. Uh, so, roll call on this, please. Councilor Goodwell. Yes. Yes. Murphy. Yes. 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 Uh, any new business this evening? Move to adjourn. I, I, before we do that, I'd just like to wish everyone a happy new year and say what an honor it's been to, to work with all my colleagues this year. So hope everyone has a good Life holiday. Back and back to the whole city of Northampton as well. So <laughs> very motion to adjourn and seconded by? Second. Second. Uh, okay. Any post to adjournment? And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.